Hello everybody and welcome to my 12th Visual Basic in Excel tutorial and this tutorial is going to introduce for loops so if I bring up Excel and what I'm going to get this program to do is quite simple I'm just going to get it to put 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 so if I bring up the editor and create a new module and sub uh, fill series and then I'm going to use what's called a for loop now I'm going to put the coding in and I'm going to explain it afterwards so you have for and then we need a variable so I'm going to call my variable counter equals and then we want what it's going to be to start off with one so we don't need to put dim as integer or anything because uh, it automatically will create this variable anyway and we want it to go to 5 and then put next here so what this is going to do is it's going to uh, put counter equal to 1 and then it's going to run the code and then when it gets to next it's going to come up here and it's going to make counter equal to 2 and then it's going to run the case and then it will get to here and go next and go 3 and then run it and then go next and then do 4 and then go next and then do it as 5 and then when it gets to next then because it's already done 5 and we've put, put it only to do to 5 it will then carry on with the rest of the case so what do we want it to do within this well I want it to put in each of these cells 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 so we'll have this workbook dot sheets sheet one dot cells and we want row one and then for the column it's going to be changing each time so I want to be using instead of just putting one, two, three, four, or five and writing it out five times, I'm going to use the counter variable. So if I just put a counter in like this, then you'll see when it runs that every time it goes through, the counter is going to increase by one, so it will fill out each cell in turn, and then dot value. And then I wanted to say one, two, three, four, five. Well, quite conveniently, we've already got a counter variable counting so if I just set it equal to counter then watch this so we have alt F8 and run and uh, one two three four five we can start it off at two if we want and move it to six and then if I run this then two three four five six so this comes in real handy you can if you want you can switch this for the rows and then run and then fill in the rows you don't necessarily have to have it equaling counter you can have it equaling anything so string you can have uh, test and then when we run this it will make them all equal to test you could uh, you can also say you can nest a for loop inside a for loop so if I put for row counter equals 1, 2, 5 and then put another next down here then so we've got one for loop inside another for loop if I put this as 1 to 5 as well and then we get it to display counter we we'll have that as row counter and counter and then we want the value to be equal to say row counter times counter so if we run this now run and we got one, two, three, four, five. We've got 
2 and then we've got our 2 times table we've got 3 and our 3 times table we've got 4 and so on and you can do this for as much as you like you can um, uh, you can make this go to 100 say you could, you could do it to any number and if I zoom out a bit because otherwise you're not going to be able to see and zoom in a bit if I run this now then it gives you all your times tables all the way up to a hundred and then going all the way to a hundred so eventually you've got one hundred times one hundred which is ten thousand uh, so that can be pretty useful for quickly filling in lots of cells with certain values uh, the other thing you can do is you don't necessarily have to put the numbers of these variables in straight away so if I delete this and we create a uh, end row and a end column if we make them integers and then make end row equal to 10 and call equal to 10. Then instead of putting a hundred we can have end row and end call. And then if we run this, zoom back in a bit, then it will run all the way to 10. So that comes in handy as well. And that's pretty much for loops. Uh, best way to get used to them is just to practice them and so thanks for listening and in the next tutorial I'll be going into while loops so I hope to catch you then.